morning. How are you all? Good to see you. Glad you're here joining us. If you're joining us online, welcome. We're glad to have you as part of our Vineyard service. Last week, we started a new series called The Right Direction. We're talking about the direction God has called us as a church body, and it's really built around our values. Our values are to love God, love people, pursue excellence, and to choose joy. So we'll be covering all four of those uh, this this uh, series, which we're super excited about. Um, it, so next week we'll talk about excellence. Of course, that's during the ladies' retreat. So uh, uh, we do have like we we're gonna have like uh, a, a breakfast for kids here and for adults if you make it here because we know it's a little harder sometimes if you're missing a key person in your home. And then choose joy. No better way to choose joy than do a big celebration. We're super excited about it. Sharon and I started this church. 30 years ago, started it in our, in our home. We went to some schools around the area, went to the Cinema Cafe, bought this place in 2000, and God has just blessed this place. We're certainly just, it's such an honor to be the pastors of this church. You guys are incredible. We want to join one service, 1030. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Maybe we didn't think it all through. Uh, if you look around, you're going, uh, Andy, uh, just my suggestion, don't be late. I don't know what else to say. Because we're kind of like all in at this point. But we're going to have a lot of fun afterwards, food and games, and you won't want to miss that. Uh, we certainly know how to have fun, and we want to do that, and uh, it's a great way to uh, choose joy. So we are going to talk about today the value of loving people. That was real important uh, to Jesus. So there's plenty of people that think, oh yeah, I love God, I just don't care for his people. Well, it doesn't work like that. We, God wants us to grow in this area of loving people. Jesus said it this way. He said, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So this emphasis on loving one another, loving our community. Now, it's honestly pretty easy or easier to love somebody who loves you back, right? And Jesus said that. He goes, hey, you don't get any cred. You don't get any street cred for loving people that are easy to love, that love you back. He goes, what makes my people unique is that we love even when people don't love us, even when they're hard to love, uh, you know, even when they don't like you and, uh, and, and even hate you. We still show love. That, that sets us apart. He says, the world, they all know how to love people. When, you're, when, you, when, it, when they're easy to love and when they're loved back. So let's look at some ways that we can love people the way Jesus did. First of all, we're going to look at six ways. First of all is accept their uniqueness. Now, everybody's different, right? And that's a good thing. You can celebrate somebody is unique. They're different. They're different than you. We actually have greater opportunities to love somebody when they're really, really different. You know, Sharon and I, We've been married 35 years, and uh, we've had, we both love the Lord, we both read the Bible, uh, but we have different views on a number of things when it comes to our faith. Now, the most important things, we agree on, you know, but, but by far, if you were just like to list them up, there's more things we disagree with than we agree with each other. Now, I don't know if that surprises you or not, but it's actually a good thing, because it causes each one of us to grow. We, oh, I never thought of it that way. I still disagree with it. But, hey, listen, uh, you know, that's a, that's a new thought that I wasn't thinking there. I wasn't even there. And it gives me a chance to grow and to love somebody who doesn't necessarily agree with me. It says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. I love how, you know, Christ accepts us as we are, regardless of our political opinion. You know, sometimes... That's, that's where the love ends, right? They find, you find out who you're voting for. And, you know, say the wrong answer. There no, there's no love for you anymore, you know. It's over. And that's such a shallow love that it's, you know, based on, you know, political views or, or, or those kinds of things. You know, recently I went to a, a movie and I saw a trailer of uh, Will Smith's new movie coming out bad boys it's his first movie since the slap you know <laughs> with chris rock right i mean there was another movie that came out but that had already been filmed before the slap and all so anyways you know i was seeing it with somebody <coughs> and i said hey i love will smith i can't wait to see see that he goes yeah yeah i mean you know hey just a slap we need to you know 
accept him as he is, and I agree with that. But he didn't slap me. If he slaps me, <laughs> I'm done. I'm not seeing another one of his movies. You know, as long as it's somebody else, he can slap. And, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of true, right? It's, it's easier to love somebody at a distance, some stranger we don't even know. Oh, yeah, I love them, accept them. But the, when they're close to us and then we get hurt, we get offended, we get wounded in some way, eh, I don't know. That's too hard. And so that's what it means to love is to love and accept somebody regardless of who they are, accepting their limitations, their weaknesses, all of those things. Number two, trust them with responsibility. You know, something real powerful when you trust somebody. You, you challenge them, you envision them, then you trust them. You say, you can do it. This past week, or I guess it was a week ago, we had uh, a, a leadership professional come in and speak to our staff. He spent uh, 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 like a half a day training our staff, and, and I asked him to speak on situational leadership. And so here's a page from that book. Some of my writing's bleeding through, but uh, situational leadership, if you're new to that, is this, it's, you start out with, uh, you know, you're telling somebody and then you're mentoring and teaching. Then you kind of move into a coaching and then you delegate. If, you know, if you're kind of real quick, if you ever saw a karate kid, you know, I'm talking about the first one way back, you know, this is wax on, wax off. You know, well, I don't know why I'm doing it. Just wax on, wax off. Then he gets so frustrated. Hey, I need to know more. I'm quitting. Then you go, well, actually, those are karate moves. And so that's, he's moved to this next level. But then when he gets into sparring and then he's kind of stepping back and he's letting him make decisions about sparring, this is where it kind of it changes. He takes this leap of faith of confidence, trusting him, you can do it. And then ultimately in the tournament, in the end, when he's thinking of quitting, he's hurt, he goes, it's all up to you. So that's kind of in a snapshot, this wheel. But we want to learn, all of us are staff, but all of us, how can we better empower people, trust them, believe in them, delegate, all those words, easier said than done. But when we pass on responsibility, uh, it's, it's an endorsement. It's saying, Uh, It's saying something positive about them. Our goal must be to empower others to do what is right and good for them. They'll ultimately do way better, go further, succeed more if we, if, if, if we, if, and that's true with us as well. People trust us and they give us responsibility and they, and they, they, they encourage us. When we take responsibility from people, we're really, that's, that's, that's in a way that's a form of rejection. And so we want to trust them. You can put confidence in somebody who is trustworthy. Now, Jesus did this all the time, right? He trusted people. And some, it, was, it was incredible how he would trust, like, his disciples with big things. Here's what Jesus said. He goes, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. He had trusted those disciples with the salvation of the world. Now, if you read those disciples... Would you have chosen those five? I mean, those 12? Like, I don't think so. You know, and he leaves before the first church has even started. And he says, okay, start churches, transform the world through the local church. I believe in you. And they did it. And they did it because he trusted them. Number three is do life together. Do life together. Now, we're all busy. And we're really more separated than ever. In a way, we're more connected, but really we're more separated. And so this, there's a price to pay to do life together with other believers, do, with other people. Look, it says the, the believers were devoted. There is a certain level of, um, of sacrifice, of, of per, hey, I, this is important. There's all these other things I could do, but I'm going to do this, and I'm going to devote myself to fellowship. Now, Jesus would go up to his disciples, his 12 disciples, and he asked them, he goes, he goes, come follow me. Now, in the, in the first century in Israel, rabbis didn't do that. It was below them to do that. They would let somebody come up to them and say, hey, could I follow you? Could I be your disciple? And then they would decide, I don't know, maybe. And they'd give them a little interview. Or, uh, but Jesus went out of his way, went up to these people that really were not scholarly bound type people. And he said, come and be part of my group. Follow me. Be part of this this 
this small group of 12 people for three years. We're going to travel around and do life together. He had Peter. He had ego problems. He had Thomas. He had doubting issues. Judas, of course, greed and, you know, betrayed him. And James and John were trying to climb the corporate ladder. You had Simon, who was the zealot, hated tax collectors. And then Matthew was a tax collector, hated zealots. I mean, and they're this group, this group together, why would Jesus pull together such a diverse group? I mean, all people with different backgrounds, they weren't, they weren't even all Jewish backgrounds, and put them together, and some of them don't like each other, because it taught them what real love was about. It taught, it taught them what it meant to do life with people that, that disagree with you, that don't see things the way you are, that they're messed up, they're sinful, they're broken, they're struggling just like you are. You're just better at hiding it, you know. And so there's, there's something powerful that comes together. You know, the number one killer of small groups, experts say, is not busy schedules. And it's not theological and doctrinal disagreements. The number one killer of small groups is EGRs. EGRs stand for extra grace required. I mean, the people that just talk and talk and talk and talk. And uh, are the people that are just quirky. And, they're, and every small group has one of these people. They're kind of a little weird. And you're like, if, if, if it was just that one person wasn't there, the group would be great, you know. But they are there. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, Andy, I've been in a number of small groups. I've never seen an EGR person there. It's because you're the person. <laughs> That's why. Everybody's showing you love, and you haven't even figured it out yet. You're just going, I love these people. Nobody's like them. And, 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 so we, and Jesus put together a group with 12 EGRs. All 12 needed extra grace required. And as they journeyed together, they grew together and, um, and uh, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. Now, we do have our small group fair today. I'm going to close the service early so that you can go and talk to some of our small group leaders and be part of a small group where you can do life together. You're saying, Andy, I'm too busy. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I would imagine we're all pretty busy nowadays. But we do it and we make a sacrifice because we're devoted to the fellowship we know this is the way God this is the this is the way God has designed the church to work so that we can grow and uh, and and do and, and 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 be part of what God's doing on this on this earth. Number four is this affirm their value. You want to love somebody, you affirm their value. You know, it's really amazing to me that when you uh, look at somebody, you can communicate value just through your your facial expressions and and how you look love looks for a way of being constructive and so you're looking you're 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 looking for a way you're compliments building somebody up really the way i like to look at it is is uh you you're like each of one of us is carrying like two buckets one is gas the other is water and you have a chance to throw gas on you know the minute there's you know because every there's a lot of people around us on any given moment, a little bit of gas and they explode, right? Just You can set them on fire. But you can also put a fire out. And so you're looking for being ways of constructive. It says encourage one another and build each other up. So you build people. How do you affirm people? How do you build them up? Well, let me give you one. This is attention. You, raise, you give them your attention. If you look at the Gospels and how Jesus often gave people his attention. The Gospel writers would say it. They would say like this. They would say, Jesus fixed his gaze upon the man with love, with tender love. There's something you can communicate through your facial expression, through your eyes. You have value. You have value. You know, in this day and age, that probably means more than ever, right? Because nowadays in a conversation, if it gets awkward or there's a, it slows down or whatever. You just get a ting. Immediately you just go, you're, somebody's talking and, yeah, keep going, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Some of you are putting your phone away right now, you know. <laughs> but that's what we do, right? This is, the, this is where we gaze our eyes and we give people our seconds. And so it's hard 
to do it today, probably more than ever. You don't have to be the person that, you know, is told, oh, yeah, we're not using our phones in the meeting today. Oh, yeah, you know what, at the dinner table, why don't you put your phone away? Why not just do it? Why not be the person that says, I'm going to be like Jesus, and I'm going to use an opportunity to look at somebody and focus on them and communicate your important. Number two is, a, is affection. You show it. You, you, you th- show it through your actions. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. In other words, if, if, you're, if you're not showing love to somebody, you might as well be rebuking them. That's how it feels. Oh, that person doesn't really care for me. Now, I know some of you struggle with being affectionate and showing that in concrete ways, but you can grow at it. You can get better at it and start, hey, what can I, you can even ask for feedback. What can I do to uh, be better in the area of affection? And then appreciation, where you build, you build people up. You appreciate them. We all love appreciating assets. Cars are not appreciating assets in general, maybe old, old cars, but, but most cars, you, the minute you drive it off the lot, especially a new one, it depreciates fast. So we want to be appreciating people. A couple of years ago, Sharon and I went to this a pastor's round table with um, Rick Warren. We got a chance to spend two days with him uh, in, a, in a kind of a smaller, I think there's like, I don't know, 20, 30 pastors there. And, uh, and before he spoke, the, the morning he, he showed up, he went around and took, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, going to each one of us and just appreciating us. Now, we were there to, you know, learn from him. And he certainly, you know, we'd all, we're happy to talk to him about you know, appreciate him and all he's done for us. But he went person to person. He came up to Sharon and I. Rick looked at Sharon and said, you have beautiful eyes. I'm thinking, you took my line, Rick. Come on, buddy. <laughs> That's, you, you stole my thunder, baby. You know, but, but uh, just appreciating. There's something powerful when you appreciate. Paul the Apostle Paul wrote a lot of the New Testament, was a pro at appreciating. He said, I thank God every time I remember you. So you look for opportunities to compliment. In fact, you can join the compliment club. It's free membership, and there's not a lot of people in it, so there's plenty of room. And it pays huge dividends because people are hungry to hear that they are valued, that what the small things they're doing matters. And you have opportunities all the time. Instead of going to the restaurant, now there's not enough servers here anymore. And you probably want a tip, and you didn't even do them enough. You know, I mean, just that, those are all probably true. But you can get swept up into the negativity of the culture around us. So you can say, you know what? I can't control all that stuff anyways. But I know I, God has me on this, you know, living this life to bring value to people. And so all the other people, they can do all the, 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 the shouting and the mean talk and the devaluing people. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be different. And affirm people. Encourage one another. And he says, do it daily. Every day you get an, you'll get an opportunity to add value to somebody, and, 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 and which is showing love. Number five, correct without being condemning. Now, we, next week, we're going to talk about pursuing excellence. If you're going to have the value of excellence, you've got to have a feedback loop where people can speak into your life. And so we want to be able to do that as well. So we affirm people, but we also have to say, hey, here's some areas where we can grow. Now, a great verse for that is uh, this verse, pretty well-known verse, speak the truth, right? Ah, the Bible says speak the truth. Now, if you know the Bible, you know that there's an, another word here. Do you think it's like speak the truth in anger? Does that sound right? Speak the truth, you know, when somebody's blown it and you can really lord it over them. No, what he says is to speak the truth in love. Now, actually, people, including myself, we don't like correction, right? We like praise. We don't like correction. The minute they start correcting us, we go, oh, okay. You're one of those. Mm -hmm. Glass half empty, I see. And we just kind of like, and we become sarcastic and defensive. And so we want to help people to grow, but also uh, protect their self-esteem and encourage them at the same time. Don't use harmful words. Use only helpful words, the kind that build up. So when we are bringing correction, the word choices that we use are important. We can't just like 
Well, just got to tell it like it is. No, that's a lame excuse. You didn't take the time to really think through a way that can encourage them and help them out. How do you do that? Well, here, here's some ways. How to correct without condemning. When possible, correct in private. Now, it's almost always possible. But we get in a hurry or we don't see the value in it. And this happens all the time. People correcting on a Zoom call or in a group text and, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. We, Jesus said it, actually. He said, do it in private. It helps. You can really restore somebody and protect somebody while getting what you wanted in the end. Next point, correct one behavior at a time. In other words, per conversation. Sometimes we get, well, I might as well just gunny sack, you know. You might as well throw it all out on the table, you know. Let's clear this puppy up. No, no, that's not. One at a time. You be choosy. Next one is, is for each correction, share three positive qualities first. This is why correcting through text or email is so hard, especially text. And I know young people, they text more than they phone call. I was talking to a young person this past week, and we were discussing this, you know, and she goes, yeah, actually, it's kind of weird when somebody calls you, you know, if you're young, like, okay, uh, extra grace required for this person, you know. But the value, when, so, and I'm fine with texting, but not when you're correcting. The value of, of, of t- see, preferably seeing them face-to-face so they can read how much you care about them. And you have the, 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 the margin so that you can talk about some positive things. If you don't have time, if you don't have the energy to think through some positive things that they bring to the table, you really don't have a right to correct. You need to be able to do that and then criticize the performance, and you praise the person. Because everybody has value, and sometimes we mix it. We start to mix our identity with what we do. And somebody's correcting something we're doing, and we take it personally like it's all about us. So if you're the person bringing the correction, you do your effort to make sure and and separate those out and, and, and build them up as a person. That leads me to my last point, which is never give up on them. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love never gives up. It's a God love because human love we see giving up all the time. But not God's love. He never gives up on us. He wants us to have that kind of love. Love knows no limit to its endurance, no end to its trust, no fading of its hope. It can outlast anything. This is the kind of love that separates the world from a genuine Christ follower, somebody who's allowing the Holy Spirit to really redeem them and change them who they are. I like this this, uh, quote from Churchill. He said, the nose of a bulldog is slanted backwards so he can continue to breathe without letting go. You can be a bulldog for love. You just say, I'm going to let go. I I mean, I'm never going to let go. I'm, I'm I'm not giving up. You're too important. You have too much value. This is a powerful kind of love. Powerful kind of love. He who began a good work in you, the Bible says, will continue until the day of Christ. God is all about loving you all the way to the very end. Even on our, you know, God loves you as much on your bad day as your best day. It's hard to even fathom that. The worst day, the things that we would want to bury or we're ashamed of, we'd never take. He loves you every bit as much on that day. That's the kind of love that God wants for us, for others. So we accept other people's uniqueness, even if they're different than us. We don't always have this mission to change them. Maybe God wants to change us through the process. Number two, trust them with responsibility. Say, I believe in you. Help develop their confidence. You do less for people and let them do more for themselves. And that is a compliment. It says, I trust you. Number three, do life together. Be willing to pay the price. It is a sacrifice to be part of a small group, a place where people will we pray together, we serve together. Of course, at the end of the, the, the summer small groups, we do serve together throughout our community on serve day. We're certainly looking forward to that. But you can be part of that. You know what was so incredible about Jesus' small group is these people that didn't like each other, that had all these problems, they were a different group after the three years because they had been shaped by love. That's what changed them was experiencing God's love in the midst of them. Number four is affirm their value. 
You give people attention. You give them affection and appreciation. Number five, correct without condemning. So you don't use harmful words. Use helpful words. Don't use put downs. Encourage them and then never give up on them. Make them feel valuable. And you know what? God says, I go first. I did it through Christ and he's doing it today where he does these same six things in your life. And so in a way, it makes it easier because when we follow Christ, we're just treating people the way he treats us. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, I invite you right now into into this this space. If you're online, whatever, wherever you're at, wherever God has, he, he wants to meet you in your space, the place where you're at. Let me pray over you and then we'll pray together. We just say, God, help me to release the past that gets in the way of what you want to do with me today. The things I've messed up, I've blown it the guilt or the shame from the past, how I've let people bring out the worst in me. And then I've also brought out the worst in others. Would you say, today, God, I want to begin a new path forward in loving people. To embrace their uniqueness, regardless of their viewpoint on politics, their viewpoint on all kinds of things. Teach me, God, how to grow in my capacity to love and to accept. You say, God, help me to see the value in doing life together where I can be part of a team that supports one another, encourages one another, expecting the best in people. You say, God, help me to trust people with responsibility. to believe in them, to affirm their value. And those moments when I need to give feedback or correction, Lord, help me to not do it in a condemning way, but to lift them up. Help me to never give up to show that kind of love. Now this morning, if you're here and you're far from God today, God has a word for you. He wants to have a close relationship with you. He cares about you. He loves you like no one else. And he wants to have a relationship with you. And so I'm going to encourage you to pray and say, God, I want in. I want to be part of that because that is the entry way in. How do you have a relationship with God? Through prayer. That's how it begins at least. And so today is your day. Whether you're online or you're sitting here, God knew you'd be here thousands of years ago so he could tell you your life matters you have value and that he loves you i want to pray with you so if every head bowed every eye closed if you're here and you're saying andy i want to come home i want to be part of this relationship that with god i want to ask god to forgive me and give me a fresh start empower me then i want to lead you in a prayer right where you're at you can just Stay seated. I'm not going to have you come forward or stand up. Just right where you're at, you can just whisper a prayer just between you and God. Don't worry about the person next to you. Just between you and God, you just repeat this prayer. And if that's you, you're saying, Andy, I'm going to follow you in that prayer. Just let me know about it. Let God know as well, just by slipping your hand up so I can see. Would you do that right now? Say, Andy, include me. Bless you. Yep. Yep. I see you in the front, several in the front, all through the congregation. Anybody else? I'm going to give you just another moment. See, I'm going to include me. I'm going to follow you in that prayer, Andy. Okay, bless you in the back. I see that. Okay, put your hand down. Pray this with me. Say, God, today I come to you. I want to put my, put my life in your hands. Teach me what love is. How much you love me and how I can love others. Would you say, God, I need to settle the past. And that begins with asking for forgiveness. So would you say, 
Today, God, forgive me. Forgive me for my things I've done wrong, things I haven't done and I should have done. You say, God, clear my conscience. Give me a fresh start. Then ask the Holy Spirit to give you power. Say, Holy Spirit, I invite you into my life so I can operate in a power that's not my own. I need your love operating in my life to love the people around me. Say, God, today I give my life to you and I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you congratulate those who made a decision for Christ? I'm proud of you. I really am. It's awesome. It's a great decision. Now, if you're uh, serving uh, and you're as a small group leader, you can go ahead and get up now and go to your, your, uh, your table because we're going to let out just a few minutes early so each one of you have a chance to go and say, uh, just talk to one or two of the small group leaders and uh, find out, or more, and find out about their group and join a group, okay? That is what I would love for each one of you to do, what I've been praying for you to do as well. Well, we have growth track step one next week. We don't have it today, but next week. And so when you, uh, if you haven't taken growth track, when you come next week, plan on staying an hour uh, after the service. We'll watch your kids, feed you. We'd love to have you in there so we can talk to you about the vision of the church and uh, so you can learn more about us. And we can learn more about you, and we'd love to do that, okay? If you'd like to give financially to Vineyard to support the vision of our church, our vision is to help people to know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, make a difference. You can do that uh, through a couple ways. One is, is through text to tithe. You can text by uh, putting in four, uh, 45777 and then BCC in the amount, online giving, uh, there's other ways of giving. We have a clear box on the side. You can let us know about that. If you prayed to receive Christ, let me know about your decision. On the Connect card that's in the seat back in front of you, or if you're on the front row, you can do it. Uh, there's a, 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 a way that you can communicate to us called our Connect card. Uh, any question you might have about our church, baptisms, your spiritual walk, let us know. And certainly if you prayed to receive Christ, let us know about that as well. We also have people at the end here that would love to pray for you. If you need prayer, don't leave without getting prayer. We have some people that will pray for you. Okay, well, would you stand with me? Remember, as you leave, don't leave without, even if you're in a small group, at least give your small group leader a high five, okay? So everybody connects with us, one of the small group leaders out there. We'd love to have you be part of that. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, our small groups and those who are willing to open up their homes, those who are willing to facilitate a small group. Lord, bless them for that. Lord, I pray for each one of us, Lord, to see the value of growing in love and doing it with others. Lord, I pray for your power and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're going to open up the doors, go out, and uh, say hi to a small group leader, ask them some questions. See you out there.